Now once you're done with your observations, you're going to need to do some graphing. So the first thing to do is just make a simple graph where you're going to chart the absorbance on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. So this is going to start at 0 seconds and it's going to go up to 120 seconds. So now just as an example, let's think about the pH experiment. What you're going to find is for each of those different pHs that you tried, you're going to have a different set of points. So all of them are going to intersect the zero here because there should be zero absorbance at time zero. That's before the reaction is even really being again to start. And then what you're going to do is you're going to plot out a line that represents your, uh, your path. Maybe this is pH 5. And then you're going to do another one for the other pH. Maybe this is pH 3. So for each of your experiments, you're going to have a line on this graph. This is useful, but what's even more useful is to calculate the slopes of these lines. And the slopes of these lines are going to give you the activity of the enzyme. So slope of each of these lines is going to represent the enzyme activity. And there's details in your lab manual about how you can calculate the slope for each of these and then create a new graph that actually shows how pH affects enzyme activity. In the second part of the lab, you're going to be looking at a different enzyme in a different reaction. So if you've ever eaten popcorn, you've probably had the sensation that when you put a piece of popcorn in your mouth and start chewing it, it seems to get sweeter and sweeter the more you chew. Well, that's because uh, popcorn and many other uh, plants contain a material called starch. And this is a quick little drawing of starch. Starch is a bunch of glucose molecules head, held together by alpha-1,4 linkages. So it's this long train of glucose. So what's happening inside your mouth is that these starch molecules are being broken down to simple sugars, maybe just like a glucose molecule or possibly two glucose molecules held together by, by a bond. But at any rate, you're breaking down the starch into these simple sugars, and this is what you, uh, gives you that perception of sweetness. So these are simple sugars. So your challenge here is to figure out whether or not there is an enzyme in your mouth that, uh, that causes this to happen. In other words, does the conversion of starch, the product, the reactant to simple sugars, the products, require the action of an enzyme. This is a page from your lab report booklet, and what your group is going to do is you're going to figure out, using the materials that are available, what sort of tests you can do to answer this question. And so this is just an example. You're going to get a bunch of cups, and in each one you're going to outline what was in the cup, and then think about the question that you're trying to answer for this and then you have spaces to record your observations and your conclusions for each of these. And hopefully if you design your experiment correctly, when uh, you're all finished with all the, the possibilities here, you'll have a good sense of whether or not there's an enzyme in saliva that breaks down starch. One thing that you'll need for this activity is distilled water, and there's a carboy of distilled water located at each sink in the lab. Another important thing about this is that anything that has uh, been exposed to saliva needs to be thrown away in the biohazard waste, this red bag which is in the back of the lab. So your group has developed a hypothesis about whether or not there's an enzyme in saliva that will break down starch into simple sugars. And now what you have to do is come up with an experiment using pretty simple materials to test that hypothesis. So you're gonna have these little cups, you're gonna have some reagents we'll talk about, and of course, you'll have fresh popcorn. Now, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is chew up the popcorn, mixing it with saliva, and then spit it out into one of these cups. But for example, you might also uh, think that possibly that mechanical act of chewing uh, maybe that by itself, without the saliva, is enough to break down those starches. So one way you can do that is take a piece of popcorn, you can mix it with some water, and then you can use one of these glass stir bars to mechanically break it up to imitate what chewing would be like. Okay. 
So that's one example of the sort of test that you can do. So you're going to have uh, five cups. Each group gets just five total cups to work with. And then there's also these two reagents. There's iodine and ClinTest tablets. One of these is a test for starch. One of these is a test for simple sugars. And I'll let you uh, and your group figure out which is which. One thing important about the ClinTest tablets is that they contain sodium hydroxide. That actually helps them dissolve better, but it also means that if you sat there and held one in your hand for a long time, it would start to melt and you might get a little burn on your hand. So we uh, encourage people to handle them using the forceps here. And when you're ready to use one of them, you can put them in your cup. They need to have a little bit of liquid with them. That could be water or saliva or anything else. And you'll see that they start to fizz up and it's actually kind of helpful to use one of these little toothpicks to mix it up and make sure that it gets completely dissolved.